viewing audience and also in our listening audience, we're certainly grateful for this opportunity of being able to share with you the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And for those of you who have just tuned in, you are watching and listening to the Jubilee Hour International, which is brought to you under the auspices of the International Gathering of Apostles and Prophets Network, Apostles and Morris Ministries. Today we have a panel and we have a special presentation that we are sharing uh, with the body of Christ and with those that are our listeners and watchers uh, globally. We're going to deal with prayer and also the need for prayer to affect government. As we all know, we're living in very serious times. There are many people that are looking to the politicians for the answers or the answer. But that is not the answer. The politicians are limited to earthly abilities, and those abilities are definitely, as we know, limited. But in this day and time of so much turmoil and crisis in the earth realm, we must look to God. Some of you may say the higher power. The scriptures uh, that we're going to deal with today, we're going to start out talking about Jesus and the foundation that Jesus laid as being the main one that God sent as his representative. Jesus said concerning himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, and our God is a God of peace. So therefore, no one goes to peace, true peace, except through Jesus Christ, who is our Prince of Peace. In the time of Israel, being the head of the nations and in their prosperity, before and after and during their times of prosperity, God raised up spokespersons for him. Of course, most of those were men, prophets, and then there were several women who were prophetess. God is directing and he's raising up more prophets and prophetess to be the spokespersons for these things that are happening in the earth realm. People are looking for answers, but we want you to know today, and whenever that you're watching or listening to this presentation, the answer is in and from the Word of God. God's prophets, those that speak for God, are going to speak according to His character. And our God is a God of holiness. In Romans, the uh, first chapter and the fourth verse, it talks about Jesus concerning his son Jesus. In the third verse, it says, our Lord, fourth verse says, and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness. Now, someone may say, well, what is holiness? Holiness means that there are people when God reverses and he changes, amen, their direction and he causes them to leave uh, the lust of the flesh and all of those things that they are driven by to follow Jesus Christ, they are also, we have been partakers of the divine nature of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of holiness, is of the spirit of holiness. In Acts, the fourth chapter, it also talks about Jesus, amen, as being the Son of God. And in Acts 4 and uh, 26, it reads, And when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and then it also says, The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were uh, gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ, for of a truth against thy holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontinus, Pilate, were gathered together against him. Now, 
What does that mean concerning government? Uh, on money, paper money, and some coins. It says, in God we trust. But there's so much going on to contradict what's on the paper uh, so far as the money is concerned. In New York, there, uh, last year, the year before last, there was a replica of an idol god placed in Times Square in the city of New York, which represents the idol god Baal. If you look at the history of the idol god Baal, B-A-A-L, it includes blood sacrifices, children and people that were sacrificed to this God. How was that? They were killed and either thrown, amen, into a fire or either uh, some other way they were killed and offered up to this so-called God, Baal. Down through the years in history, we see the relationship of people and other gods such as Asherah and all of these other gods that were false gods but some of their tentacles, their relationships, their connections go back to Baal. Somebody said, well that's just uh, maybe a stone that somebody uh, carved out or maybe it's a piece of wood that somebody carved, but it's more than that. Anytime you have an idol god, you have an unseen force that is with that piece of wood or that piece of stone. There is an unclean angel. There are forces. There are demons of idolatry. There are demons of witchcraft. There are demons of lying spirits. There are demons of religious spirits that work with these idols. And there are times that those idols are seen as having done something. Say for instance, there was a time uh, in different parts of the United States, there was an idol of that was bleeding. That's a lie. Can't no idol bleed, no pla plaster Paris, something that somebody made in a factory and all of a sudden it's gonna start bleeding red blood. No, that was a demon that overshadowed that piece of plaster Paris to make it seem as though that it was bleeding. And people were going, there were several times, people would go, amen, from miles around to see this so-called phenomenon. No, it was a lie. Now, uh, there's a man who wrote a book whose name is Jonathan Kahn who wrote this book called The Harbingers. And these are incidents, they are events that are connected with powers, the power of God and also satanic forces. Now, why is this being brought up concerning our government being connected? How is the government connected? Now, number one, nobody could put up a tower or a replica of Baal without a permit. They couldn't just go in there and put that stuff up there in Times Square without the government knowing about it. Somebody had to sign off on it. So here we have this permitted thing that forcefully has caused New York, the city of New York, the area of Times Square, to move into the lane. They're, they're in the lane of idolatry and people are flowing people and and anybody that knows anything about times square times square is is heavily populated with people all the time night and day i've been there so there are a lot of people just going back and forth all the time in times square all right so then there's another case in, in detroit and another city where there was a statue of satan put up there are a lot of things that are happening. Now, how is this connected? The prophets and the prophetess. We are responsible. Those that have an apostolic uh, connection in our ministry. We are responsible. God says, warn them 
from me. Now, we see what has happened in the United States recently. <coughs> One thing that has not been in the news, Los Angeles, California, some of you that want to look it up, look it up on the internet. Los Angeles, California, I'm talking about the city, I'm not talking about just a, one of the towns, the city of Los Angeles, California, as I speak, is being threatened by wildfires, and listen, they can't, they can't hardly do anything with them. So therefore, uh, we are under the threat of judgment, and except the people of God get up and pray through prevail that God would have mercy, there are other things that are possibly going to take place. And I want to say as I stop, Kim Pang Yang is not playing. That man in North Korea has decided that he's going to be one that's going to cause much destruction in the United States. So that's something that we need to focus on and asking God, Lord, have mercy. Help us in this day that people have exalted lust above the word of God and above the plan of God. All right, now next we're going to ask uh, missionary uh, Minnie Johnson. She's going to come concerning prayers and how that they're connected with government. And then following her in conclusion will be evangelist Dolores Marie Daniel. And she's going to deal with scripture, Romans the 13th chapter, that lets us know how we are to deal with government. All right, God bless you. Hi. <clears throat> I'm speaking about um, spiritual wickedness in high places. We are to stand in the gap for our leaders in high places, our political leaders in high places. There's wickedness in the high places. There's both spiritual wickedness and natural wickedness. We, as the saints, are to keep our leaders covered in the blood of Jesus constantly. We are to keep them covered at all times because they are dealing with both of the spirits. Uh, both forms of wickedness, spiritually and naturally. We live in a spirit-spirit world, and we are going to be influenced by one spirit or the other, God's spirit or the enemy's spirit. We as saints can't say that the political decisions don't affect us. We are going to have leaders over us, and we need to make sure that their decisions are spirit-filled by the right spirit. Their decisions affect us and our loved ones. It's our responsibility to make sure that their decisions are influenced by God, the right spirit. The laws and rules that they make will affect our lives and our loved ones' lives in one way or another. We don't have the time to be complaining about the decisions that they're making or about the situations that come from their decisions that they're making. Our time is to be spent on our knees crying out to God for our leaders and praying to God that they will make godly decisions. We need for our leaders to be led by the Spirit of God so we can live a quiet and peaceful life. The Lord says he holds the heart of the king in his hand. It's our job as the salt of the earth to cry out to God which way to turn our leaders' hearts. The fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man of Bell is much. Fervent prayer means constant prayer, heated prayer. Effectual prayer I mean prayer that's producing a change, the, the intended change that we want. That's what our effectual fervent prayer would get. We, as the salt of the earth, has to preserve the earth. Salt preserves. 
We preserve through our prayers. We can't go to our leaders and tell them the godly decisions to make. We can't tell them what God wants them to do. But we can tell God which way to turn their hands. And we do that in prayer. He hears our prayers and he is waiting to hear us praying for our leaders. He's waiting on us as the saints to get his attention for our political leaders. Our leaders may not know the God that we know. Our leaders may not know God as we know him. They may not have godly knowledge, but we do. Therefore, it is our job and our duty as saints to seek God for them. So let's keep them up in our prayers constantly before the Lord because it does affect us and it affects our loved ones, the decisions that they make and the situation that their decision calls for us. Be blessed. Praise God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Praise God. I'm going to, I have two definitions and one of the definitions that I got out of, that I have as I was reading the 13th chapter of Romans is ordination. Okay, so here's the definition. An order or decree of something, and it has a parenthesis, and it says officially. Okay, in other words, the Lord has placed Praise God, those in leadership, and when I say that, I mean we have to have a leadership in order to function in, in this society, because if we don't, then it's going to be chaotic. Somebody may say, well, Evangelist Marie, they're not perfect. True, but then on the other hand, God has placed, and when I say placed, I mean there, there has to be leadership somewhere. See, because you have rules and you have regulations and, you know, different things like that. So God wants even us as saints to, how would I say this, to look at them in the right way. All right? It says subjection. It says bring a person or a country under one's control or jurisdiction. And then it says, particularly by using force. And when I say that, I'm not talking about, I don't mean it like negative force, but a country has to have a king. A country has to have a president. Praise God. The scriptures say that we are to be subject to the higher powers. Expect if that is things that are right, listen, what would it look like, and I'm also talking to boys and girls too, what would it look like if you jaywalk across the street? You know that you're not supposed to walk across the street in a certain way, but then you're doing what you want to do. Something may happen, right? You're driving, you're a teenager and you're driving. There are certain rules of the road, certain rules that you must abide by. Praise God. Whether whether it's, it's in the White House, whether it's in the cabinets, whether it's in, in the other areas of leadership, praise God. We have to abide and, and do the laws, do it right. And when we do it right, and someone else see us do it right, then a lot of times the Lord will bless somebody else. They look at See, we're looked at as saints. So we have to go by what's right. If we know that we're supposed to do things at a certain month or do things even when it comes financially at a, at a certain time, you're supposed to pay things at a certain time, even when it comes to the police force. Listen, I'm going to say this. Praise God. If a police happens to catch you, Praise God, it would be better not to have an attitude. Just do what they ask you to do. Praise God. And, 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 and a lot of times when you do that, the Lord, 
Yes, they, they might be a little harsh sometimes, but in the final analysis, God sees what you do, and you just pray. As, as, as Sister Minnie said, you have to pray in order for them. Pray for their minds. Pray for their hearts. And a lot of times when you pray, and I'm not talking about just, just policemen, other areas in leadership, when you pray, then God touches the heart of the king. Yes, he can touch the heart of whoever. Touch the heart of the priest and captain. Touch the heart of the mayor. Touch the heart of different people that are in leadership. Praise God. See, because if we don't pray, then there's no peace. If we don't pray, then their minds are just open to whatever Satan wants them to do. But God allows us, he told us to pray. Praise God. All right. Praise God. I hope that I said something to encourage. And I want to say, those of you young people, those of you that are behind the wheel, be careful. Be careful because, see, you driving for you, and you have to, sometimes you have to drive for others too. And, and, and their parents, look, if you do right, praise God, grown-ups, if you do right, then the children, they look at you. Listen, don't get in the car and just joyride, and then you end up with a ticket, and then, and then you get an attitude, and then expect for them to, 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 to treat you in a certain way. Praise God, do right. The scripture says, do right for your conscience sake. That's what it said, do right and keep, it, keep you a clear conscience. Don't end up doing wrong and then your conscience, Father, then, then you have to repent, you know, repent to whoever and then repent to God too. God put leaders down here for a purpose so that we have peace, peace so, so, so that things would be in order. That's all basically what it is to have order. All right. I hope you all pray my strength in the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. For those of you that uh, are watching, we have been blessed with an exhortation from uh, missionary Minnie Johnson and evangelist Dolores Marie Daniel. I'm going to invite you to log on to our website www.ajmministries.com There you will find a new presentation and we are believing God and expecting the Lord to bless this presentation that you're listening to and watching to also be able to go to the underground church. Now someone may say, what is the underground church? Is exactly what I said. They have to meet many times underground. Some of them go in caves. Some of them may meet in someone's basement to be hidden from the government. There are people that meet in high rises where there are a lot of people so they feel like if they meet in a high rise they won't be discovered as uh, well so far as as being uh, in a house it's less probably less uh, chance of them being discovered in a high rise where there may be 50 or more families than they would be if they were in a house this is the underground church. Where are the underground churches? Nations like China, Iran, Iraq, the Sudan, Turkey, Russia, North Korea. These nations do not permit Christianity to go forth legally in the in uh, the nation the government you have red China which is communistic and the Chinese many of them that want to follow the Lord Jesus they have to meet in secret 
So God has blessed us, and we give God the glory to be able to have a breakthrough in some of these countries. And we're really seeking the Lord to recover one of the uh, companies that we no longer are on. But during the time that we were on there, God blessed us. We're in that there were over 100 Chinese that were listening to our, at that time, the online radio presentation. But now we have changed it, and uh, it, we're calling it a cyber assembly, particularly for the underground churches. So we're asking those of you that are saved in Christ Jesus that you would pray for this endeavor. We want to be able to have more breakthroughs. And uh, there was a man by, long years ago by the name of Peter Popoff that smuggled Bibles into Russia, China, and other countries. And the way that he did it, he would hide Bibles with other stuff. Now this is the way that many times the broadcasts have to go. And what we're doing, soon we will have our broadcast surrounded with music. We're going to play a lot of music and then we will stick in something from the gospel. And it would be a little, it won't be exactly totally hidden, but it will be hidden enough for them uh, not to get in trouble. This is what we're believing the Lord for. There are countries that even to, if they find out that they are having gatherings and they are listening to something Christian, they can get in trouble. So we want to pray for the underground churches. Now, if you want more information about the underground churches, go on the persecuted church on the in internet. Just put in your browser, the persecuted church. And then that will give you the information about all the countries that are definitely, uh, they cause Christians to be threatened. And, and there's a lot of things that happen to Christians in some of these nations. So we are so blessed to have these liberties. And this is the reason why we want to continue to pray for our government. Thank you. 